When you move on to the broadsword pattern, you're going to have to change a lot of how you think about how power is produced. So the previous forms, the previous patterns, the previous lessons, you've learned to create power by whipping and stretching into the movements. With this, it doesn't work that way most of the time because a sword is sharp. So you don't really need to whip into it. You touch, glide, and it just cuts. Yeah, so this, the, our broadsword pattern, our Tao pattern, is a, it's a more graceful, more elegant dance-like pattern. So try and put that into your, into your movements. Another thing is when you move on to the sword pattern, so in the staff pattern, I've told you over and over again that the staff needs to become an extension of your body. It, you can't be moving the staff as, it, as if it's some thing you're holding and it just looks disjointed and it looks disconnected. The sword is the same, but the sword is tougher to get because it's, um, you're not holding it with two hands, you're holding it with one hand. And it's more difficult to get the control. So the sword pattern is starting to help you understand. First of all, it gives you a lot of wrist strength, depending on the weight of the sword that you're using and the flexibility. You wanna try and get a broad sword that's not too flexible. The less flexible, the better. This is like very, very, the flexibility isn't that much. There's a little bit of a bend at the tip. This is my first broadsword I ever got. I've got stronger ones now, but this one, yeah, this is the first broadsword I ever got. So, yeah, we don't want broadswords that are too floppy, flappy, that's used in modern wushu for performance, because that's not really what we're working on. So a couple of pre preliminary exercises that you do with the broadsword. First thing is we stand in um, just a normal bow and arrow stance. And we're going to hold the sword with our right hand up, up against the, the guard. And we don't want to grip too tightly, yeah? When I hold the sword, I'm basically gripping with my thumb and my index finger. These three other fingers help maneuver and direct and help me flow with the sword. Yeah, because if I'm holding tightly, then it becomes rigid. I want to be able to flow, to move, to change, to come around. So the pre preliminary exercise, we hold straight. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the sword over on the blunt side and place it on our shoulder on the opposite side that we're holding. Then we take our hand over and bring it onto our other shoulder. And from there, we come back to the starting position. So we come up, change, down. Up, change, down. Up, change, down. When you get that, you can add the other hand. So our sword hand is basically just a fingers together spear hand that helps balance out the direction, the intent and the power of the sword. So as this comes over, this mirrors. So you see it's mirroring a movement. Down. Cross, shoulder, other shoulder, down. And then when you've get, got the movement, you can flow. Now when I first started doing this, I started banging <laughs> the edge, the guard, onto my head over and over again. It just happens you need to be able to just get a bit more shoulder flexibility and flow. When you've got that, you can do that stepping forward. So we step forward with one leg, place on the shoulder, and I'm going to bring my other leg next to bent stance. And as I do that, I go to the other shoulder, down. One, two, down. One, two, down. So we flow.
when you're doing these exercises, very important to keep the preliminaries of putting it on your shoulder onto the other shoulder because this is helping us to start connecting the sword to our body because again if you if I'm doing it correctly you watch now watch when I'm doing it incorrectly it just looks wrong that's how you see a lot of people do these, do these broadsword forms. <laughs> 